I don't tell a lot of personal stories here, but I thought you all might want to hear this one. Almost exactly a year ago, I took the online test for the game show Jeopardy. At the time, they did it a couple of times a year. Now they do it whenever you want to take it, but I signed up. I took the test. It's 50 questions long, and it goes by really fast. You know, you just type in your answers, and you never find out your score, though you can always try to guesstimate it. In the past, I, I thought I did okay, but nothing ever came of it. So I didn't think this time would be any different. You know, maybe I failed, maybe I did okay, but it's not like I would hear from the show. It's one of those things you just do and then you put it in the back of your mind. But for whatever reason, I got an email inviting me to an in-person audition, which has never happened to me. And that audition is meant to give the casting folks a chance to meet you, to, to see your personality, to decide whether the TV audience might like you, and to see your ability to perform in a mock game because, you know, you might be good at trivia, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're good at Jeopardy. And they also make you take another 50-question test, mostly to make sure you didn't cheat online. And so last November, I drove up to Milwaukee. I went to some hotel, went to the lobby, and basically met a few dozen other people one afternoon. So did it go well? Well, I'm normally a, a cynical person, but when I walked out of there, I didn't feel awful. I mean, I, I thought the test went okay. I thought the mock game went smoothly as did the really brief conversation I had in front of everyone with the casting team. But, you know, everyone there was smart, and, and a lot of them were interesting, and they had funny personal anecdotes to share. I'm sure everyone else was doing what I was doing and playing this mental game of, oh, that person is totally going to be on the show instead of me. But still, I mean, cool experience, right? I mean, definitely a fun story, even if nothing comes of it. You know, let me tell you about the time I almost made it on Jeopardy. In case you're wondering, I didn't tell them what I did for a living. I didn't say, I'm a professional atheist. No, I, I said I was a blogger who covered religion and politics, which, which is accurate, if not specific, and I left it at that, and they seemed cool with it. There was actually another film crew that pulled me aside after everything was over because they just wanted to ask me some questions about my love for Jeopardy. Happy to oblige, you know, I wasn't even sure what we were filming for. But a few seconds of our interview actually appeared in an ABC special that aired in January just before the show's recent Greatest of All Time tournament. So they said to us at the audition, that approximately 80,000 people take the online test each year. About 3,000 are selected to come to an in-person audition, and about 400 actually get invited to be on the show. And this was unspoken. Most of those 400 people are going to lose. I mean, the odds of getting to play, much less winning, are against everyone. Everyone wants to be the next Ken Jennings, winning 74 games in a row most everyone will actually win zero. <laughs> but to those of us in the room that day, they said we were in the contestant pool for 18 months. If they wanted us to be on the show, we could get a call any time between now and 18 months from now. But let's be real, they're not gonna call. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some stories online from some contestants who put the audition out of their minds entirely only to get a call in month 16 or 17, or, or sometimes even month 20, because why not? But there are even more stories of people who never get that call. So they just keep auditioning again every couple of years, hoping the break goes their way this time. I got a call three weeks later. Completely unexpected and totally amazing. I mean, how often do we get pleasant surprises these days? And from what I can gather, they, they didn't call because I had some crazy good audition. I think I just got lucky in terms of who they wanted and when they needed contestants. And I'll take it. I'm not going to ask any other questions, you know. Here's what they told me. I need to fly myself out to California in six weeks to film an episode on this date. I didn't even bother looking at a calendar. I'm just like, yeah, I'll be there. I had to pay for my own flight. I had to pay for my own hotel room. 
But if you lose the game, when you lose the game, you are guaranteed $1,000. So it, it kind of all balances out. And thankfully, all of this happened before the pandemic situation. So that gave me six weeks. And I, I spent all that free time in like mid-December and Christmas and all of January. I spent those six weeks brushing up on the show's most popular categories. World capitals, I knew all of them. Shakespeare, American history, geography. I tried to avoid trivia sites, but there is an archive of every Jeopardy game online, and I played every past Jeopardy game from present day to as far back as time would allow. I think I made it to like mid-2017 by the time I got on the plane. Besides just getting familiar with the content, I will admit I secretly hoped that the show's writers might have written like a hundred clues about one category only to spread them out over the years, and you know, maybe I would come across that. I mean, even though I've watched the show often enough, it did give me better insight into the way everything is asked, what the buzzwords are, you know, if they say this author, you better think of this play, and what I needed to study, which was always more. That's the answer. What do you need to study for Jeopardy? More. I also read up on how to wager at the end of the game because, I mean, I know math, but I kept reading about how so many people screw up their wagering at the end of the game and, and lose a game. They could have won. By the end of January, you should have seen my Google Maps search history. It was bananas. I was jumping from islands to national borders to rivers to deserts. I mean, Wikipedia, for whatever criticism you want to give it, Wikipedia became my best friend. I don't really drink myself, but I know they ask a lot of questions about alcohol. So I was making a spreadsheet of what ingredients went in what beverages. I mean, it was insane. I also found out how little I actually knew about movies and, and classic literature and opera and Canada. Who knew that was a real country? So my strengths were anything related to wordplay or crosswords, which I do all the time, religion, I would hope, and numbers, since I was a math teacher, I majored in it. But again, those topics don't come up a lot. That's maybe the hardest thing about getting on the show. Contestants have no clue what the categories will be until your game begins. A PhD could play a college dropout, and it's anybody's game. It's all just a giant crapshoot. There were plenty of practice games I played where I felt like I knew everything and others where I knew next to nothing, and I'm just dreading the actual show. And the last thing you want to do is live out your dream, and you meet Alex Trebek, and you're on the show, and then you become a meme online because you said or did something stupid. There are no do-overs on the show, you know, so you don't want to screw up too badly. So anyway, it's the end of January. My taping day was a Wednesday, and they tape five shows each taping day, a full week in one day. I was going to be somewhere in that mix. So that morning, I spent a few hours going through an orientation with all the other contestants. There were about a dozen of us, including a couple of alternates, and we would all be playing that week. We just didn't know what day we would be playing or who, would we, who we'd be up against. But we got to practice on the real stage with the real buzzers, and we got the standard advice they give to everybody. Don't buzz in too early or you'll be locked out for a fraction of a second, and that's enough time for someone else to swoop in. Or they said, you know, once Alex is done reading the clue and you see these off-screen lights, buzz in like there is no tomorrow. It's a delicate balance that can make or break everyone's game. Everyone tells you, you better practice buzzer strategy. Besides makeup and paperwork, we also had submitted some personal stories, so we went over which ones the producers thought Alex Trebek might want to chat with us about during the show, though we were also told he might go off script. And that is a separate kind of horrifying, you know, the idea of ad-libbing with Alex Trebek on national TV. That's scary, but they told us, you know, if he does it, just roll with it. <laughs> As for the other contestants, I mean, I wish I could tell you I saw them and I'm like, I'm, I'm totally going to destroy all of you. That was not the case at all. They were actually, all of them, they were all really nice and fun and they're obviously smart. Like when we weren't playing, we were talking, we were in the audience watching, 
And we were honestly, we were all rooting for the players to get it right. I mean, I know all of us kind of like, oh, we felt really bad if we saw someone miss a question, especially an important question, because we all knew that could be us. And also we liked the players. <laughs> So anyway, I wasn't called for the Monday game. I sat in the audience for that. I wasn't called for the Tuesday game. I sat in the audience and watched that one. But when Tuesday's game ended, seconds later, the producers walked to where all the contestants were sitting and they called my name. So I was gonna play on Wednesday. So we quickly touched up my makeup and I changed my clothes because they didn't like the shirt I was wearing. And I took my spot at the center podium and I swear it happened really fast, but the lights come on, the music comes on, and Alex comes on. And it all just started. Interesting thing, for security reasons, none of us, even the players, we didn't get to see Alex Trebek until the show started taping. He knows all the clues, you know, so we can't be around each other. What you see on the show is really the only time the contestants see him too, Except for a few seconds after the first commercial break, you know, when he took a little quick picture with us, and for about a minute after the episode ends when he chats briefly with all three contestants, there isn't any small talk with him. Um, but in case you're curious, I thought he looked really good. I mean, he looked healthy as much as we could expect. He was joking with the studio audience during commercial breaks. He's been open about his stage four pancreatic cancers, so I think all of us contestants just felt really lucky that we could be on the show while he's still there. I mean, the guy's a legend. Okay, so now to the question I'm sure some of you are wondering, you know, how did I do on that Wednesday show? Can't tell you. Goes without saying that I'm not supposed to reveal the clues or the results. Here's what I will tell you. It was an emotional roller coaster. I mean, there were moments when I felt amazing and moments where I felt nothing was going right, nothing was going my way. And all of those feelings came and went within seconds because the show is taped in real time. I mean, it's fast. And if you get something wrong, they told us just shake it off and keep moving forward, which, which is good life advice too. I mean, there were so many instances when all three of us knew the answer and it was a race to the buzzer as soon as we could buzz in, followed by utter frustration when someone beats you to a clue you knew you would have gotten right. And there were moments when I'm sure all of us were kicking ourselves for not knowing something we felt we should have known or we totally would have known if we were at home watching and yelling at the TV. So it's now been two months since the taping I couldn't tell you most of the clues we had. I don't remember. I have no clue how I reacted to much of anything. But it took a year, including several weeks of intense cramming, at least for me, for the opportunity to play for 22 minutes, maybe more, against one person who's already a proven champion and someone else who's a total wild card. And so many things can happen to change the outcome of each game. I mean, anyone who's ever played can undoubtedly tell you every single one of them. It was just an incredible experience, though. I mean, I cannot believe it happened. I am still in shock that they called me. And all of that is to say, the episode is going to air this Wednesday, April 1st. I know it's April 1st. It's not a joke, I promise you. It's on whatever channel Jeopardy is on in your city. I hope you'll watch it. If you have any questions about the show or you just want to rip on me for something I said or did, leave those comments below and I'll try to respond to, to the good ones soon. But thanks for watching.